Okay, so we're still in unit three, six, one, adding and subtracting polynomials. I want to go over a few vocabulary words you should have seen, but we want to make sure everybody's up to the same place. So a monomial is a product of a number and one or more variables with whole number exponents, so no fractional exponents. Polynomial is a monomial or sum of monomials. And I have some examples here of a monomial, here of a polynomial. Notice the difference is that this is just a string of monomials separated by adding and subtracting. The degree of the monomial is the sum of the exponents of the variables. For example, 2x to the third, the degree is 3. If I have 5x squared, y to the seventh, the degree is 9, because 2 plus 7 is 9. And 5x, the degree is 1, because that power on the x is just a 1. Now, degree of a polynomial is the degree of the monomial term with the highest degree. So if we're looking at this, 3x to the fifth minus 4x to the seventh plus 5x squared, the term that has the highest power is right here. So the degree of this polynomial is 7 because it's the highest power. Then we have what's called a leading coefficient, the coefficient of the term with the greatest degree. And so if we look here, looking at the same example as I had up here, the 3x to the fifth minus 4x to the seventh plus 5x squared, the leading coefficient is negative 4 because we already decided that x to the seventh was the highest power, so its coefficient is negative 4. And that's just kind of going over some vocabulary. Make sure you have them all written down in the examples. Now, we have another kind of example up here that we're going to work with um, that talks about terms and coefficients and degrees. So if I have the term y, the coefficient is 1, that's the number in front, and the degree, the power, is 1. 3y squared, the coefficient is 3, and the power on the y is 2. Negative 5y cubed, the coefficient is negative 5, degree is 3, and if I have the term, and it's a monomial of 10, the coefficient is 10, there is no degree, the degree is 0. Because remember, anything to the 0 power is just 1, so there's no y there. Now, for A, it wants us to take that, those values up there at the term and write it in standard form. That means we need to start with the term with the highest power. Well, that's negative 5y cubed, so we're going to start by writing that one. And then we go to the next highest, which is plus 3y squared, and then the next would be y, and plus 10. Now the 3, the y, and the 10 don't have any negatives in front of it, so we just leave them. The leading coefficient, remember, leading coefficient is the term that's in front of the highest power, highest power being 3. So my leading coefficient here is just negative 5. Coefficient is not the variable. So it brings up kind of a question. How do you find the degree of a polynomial with multiple variables in them? Well, you add the exponents of each term, and the term with the highest degree is the degree of the polynomial. So if we quickly go back over here to this example, I would go through and add up the degrees. So this is a 1, so the degree here is 3, this is 5, this is 2, because 1 and 1, and this is 6. So my leading coefficient for this would be a 5. This is the one with the highest power, so that would be the degree of this polynomial would be 6. Turned out to not be 1 with the two variables. So the degree of the polynomial would be 6 for that case. All right. We're going to look at just adding and subtracting some polynomials today. And it's pretty basic. I like to do it just like what we did in elementary school, where we add things up in columns. And when we do that, we want to make sure we put things lining up like terms. I like to do it this way only because I think in the long run, it makes things easier because then we just add straight down. So the first thing I want to do is put things in order. I have a 5x to the fourth in the back here, looking at just what's inside this parentheses. So I'm going to rewrite that in standard form. 5x to the fourth plus 4x cubed minus x squared. Now, I don't have any x's, so I'm going to leave a little space and then drop to a 2, just a little space. I'm going to rewrite 
the second polynomial, this one underneath lining up my like terms. So my 3x to the fourth goes here. I have a plus 6x squared and a minus x. Remember we left that space? Kind of why. And I'm going to draw a line underneath and we're going to add straight down. When we add polynomials, the variable and the powers do not change. We only add the coefficients. So 5 plus 3 is 8, and it tags along with the x to the fourth. Since there's nothing under here, we just bring that down. And then negative x squared plus 6x squared. That leaves me with 5x squared. Nothing above the negative x, so it comes down. And then a plus 2. And I've added the polynomial together. So again, I'm going to make sure I write this first one in order, 3x to the 11th. And I know that I have things that go between 11 and 6, but I don't know if I'm going to need them. And I know that I have things, and that's a negative, not a positive, that go between 6 and the 1. So I spaced it out just a little bit. Now I'm going to look at my second polynomial, and I'm going to see if I can line up anything. Well, this one doesn't line up, but I know it fits in here. And I have a negative x that lines up under the 8x, and then a plus 17. And then we're adding, so we're just going to add straight down. I have 3x to the 11th plus 6, or x to the 6th plus 4x to the 4th. Negative 8 minus 1 is negative 9x and then a plus 17. Remember, we're adding the coefficients, so my powers and my variables do not change. Adding is pretty basic. When we get into the subtracting, it becomes a little bit more challenging. So I kind of want to take you and move you over this way, and I'll grab the marker so it moves with us. Looking at these, these are some subtraction ones, but I want to follow that same process. There's just one little difference that we're going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and write the first one, and I'm going to put it in the order. So 12x cubed, the squared comes next, then my 5x, then a plus 19. I don't have any spaces up here. But before I go and write the other one underneath, it's subtraction. So I want to make sure I just take this negative and I distributed in everything here. So this 6 is going to become negative. This 9x is going to be positive. The 3 is negative, And the negative 18 will become positive. And now I'm going to rewrite those values underneath correctly. So the 6x is a negative 6x squared. And a positive 9x a minus 3, and then a positive 18 up here at the beginning. And then I'm going to draw my line underneath. And I'm going to add. So 12 plus the 18 is 30x to the third. Then we get a minus 14x squared plus 14x plus 16. And there's my answer. So the big difference with the adding and subtracting is making sure you distribute on that negative first. So let's try this last one here. We're going to write it in numerical order, starting with our very first one. Got to keep it in the same order they give you as far as which one goes first. I'm going to leave a space because I know there's things that can fall between 7 and 4, and I know things can fall between 4 and no variable. Now I'm going to distribute that negative. So that becomes a positive, this is a negative, that one into a positive, and I'm going to line up my terms. 9x to the fourth minus 6x squared plus 31. Nothing got added underneath that 27 or 23x to the seventh, but that's okay because it's going to drop down. Look at what happens there. Negative 9 plus 9 becomes 0. So I have a minus 6x squared. 1 plus 31 is 32. And we've got our final answer. Make sure you take good notes.